This is an interesting day, as I said to Jim Inhofe. There it is. I actually agree with much of what he said, and Mr. Johans, I certainly agree with much of what you said, and it's interesting to have people from uh, organized labor in the Chamber of Commerce with us today, the leadership there. I speak also as a former mayor, and I think I want to reiterate one of the points that Mr. Johans made. My experience, and I'm sure yours, was that if you don't take care of your rotting infrastructure, your crumbling infrastructure this year, it doesn't get better next year, right? It gets worse and it becomes more expensive. So I think that in the midst of a severe recession, where our construction industry is in very bad shape, we saw the amount of unemployment that is there. If there ever was a time to start rebuild our, rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure, now is the time. So this is what we're talking about today is jobs. We're talking about something in terms of increasing the wealth of the nation. It has to be done. Let's do it now. We're talking about roads. In my state of Vermont, uh, the, uh, while the um, stimulus package did not put as much money as I wanted, we put more money into roads and bridges than at any time in the history of our state, and we are seeing the difference. But clearly, we need a lot more. In states like Vermont, where you have 20 below zero weather, that temperature beats up your roads very badly. So we have to be mindful not only uh, of different states with different needs, but rural areas as well. And uh, let's not uh, forget about the problems in rural America. Also, this is an issue of international competition. Madam Chair, let me just read you this. Today, the United States invests just 2.4% of GDP on infrastructure. Europe invests twice as much. More troubling, China invests almost four times our rate, roughly 9% of their GDP annually. On rail alone, and I know this is something that Frank Lautenberg has been very interested in, the Chinese invested $186 billion from 2006 through 2009. According to the New York Times, within two years, that country will open 42 new high-speed rail lines that will have trains that can reach speeds of more than 210 miles per hour. In the United States today, you know what we have? We have situations where trains go from location A to location B in a slower time than they did 50 years ago. We're moving backwards, and the Chinese are building dozens of high-speed rails. But it is not only trains, it, it is not only roads, it is not only bridges, it is tunnels, it is water as well. I know outside of the jurisdiction of this bill. Let me tell you a story, and I don't think it is unique to Vermont. I met with a mayor in one of our largest uh, cities a couple of months ago, and he had this piece of pipe, kind of old, decrepit looking piece of pipe. He said, you know, the guy who laid this uh, water line for us after he did this, he designed it, he went off to the war. And I knew what the punchline was, and I said, well, what war was that? He said it was the Civil War. Civil War. And this was Rutland, Vermont, second largest city in the state of Vermont, and that is not unique in America. We are losing enormous amounts of fresh water in this country because of leaks in water lines. We have wastewater plants all over America that needs work tunnels that need work, and meanwhile, you showed us a picture of millions of workers ready to go to work. And when they go to work rebuilding America, they get a paycheck, they spend that paycheck, it has a stimulative impact uh, on our country. So what I am excited about today is that I think there is a broad understanding from all across the political spectrum that now is the moment to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure to pay attention not just to urban needs, as important as they are, to rural needs, to do it all across the infrastructural spectrum. And I am excited by the fact that we have Mr. Donahue and Mr. Trumpke here, that we have people with very, very different political philosophies united about this. So, Madam Chairman, let's go forward on this. We have an opportunity to do a whole lot for America.